Many of us think that if we want to stay healthy, we simply need to eat healthy, exercise, get enough sleep, don't smoke, and go to the doctor. These things are important, but did you know there are many other factors besides personal behaviors that shape health? Living and working conditions have a far more significant impact on health than many people realize. Unfortunately, the playing field is far from level for different groups in the United States when it comes to moving up the economic ladder and securing healthy living and working conditions. We still have pervasive inequities in housing and education, employment and income, and the criminal justice system, all of which contribute to differences in health outcomes between race and income groups. Well, part of this really stems from a lot of the historical factors in this nation. When we look at the civil rights movement, the suffrage movement, uh, these are movements that were initiated to equalize the playing field. But when you look at the uh, the wealth that uh, that is amassed by and the outcomes by not only racial minorities but also by women, you see huge discrepancies in terms of not only home ownership but also income, wealth, education level, unemployment rates. There's a huge discrepancy that exists. Refugees were being placed in really, really bad housing and I really tried hard to convey the message there is a connection between substandard housing and asthma and other respiratory diseases. Substandard housing is associated with increased exposure to mold, to dust mites, rodents, cockroaches, and other important allergens. When it comes to housing, health department staff work with residents and community partners along the spectrum of prevention to strengthen individual knowledge and skills, promote community education, educate healthcare providers, foster coalitions and networks, change organizational practices, and influence policy and legislation. We recently worked with the members of the Mid-Michigan Asthma Coalition to develop easy to understand local information for parents of children with asthma. We also produced a local resource guide focused on healthy homes, renters' rights, and financial empowerment, which is available on our website and distributed at community events and home visits with families affected by lead poisoning. If a child has a capillary screening of five or greater, they are given a packet of resources that has additional information about possible sources of the dangers of lead um, and how they can get additional resources to rid their homes of this lead contamination. Our annual community event is called Not One More Life. It's part of a national movement. We offer a free lung function test and a brief consultation with a physician to offer a free asthma screening and education program to anyone in the community. And it helps people understand asthma triggers. We offer asthma education. Every year we seem to see one or two individuals who come in who have very severe asthma, unrecognized, untreated, and so we can really make an immediate and direct impact on those individuals. One of the goals of the coalition is to provide healthcare education not just to patients, but to physicians and other healthcare providers who take care of patients with asthma. And as part of that, we offer free lectures and educational sessions for primary care providers. There was one recently at the Ingham County Health Department that I provided. The Land Youth Center Health Resource Team has been around for 15 years, and it's one of the coalitions of the Power of We Consortium. So in 2014, we did a health impact assessment related to the regional fair and affordable housing plan. A very easy way for health departments to impact the prevention of lead poisoning is by doing screening in the WIC clinic. Lead poisoning screening is not covered as part of the WIC benefits, but here at Ingham County Health Department, we've gotten creative about how we can make sure that that service is added to the WIC program at no cost to our participants. We are screening approximately 5,000 children in Ingham County each year. Ingham County Health Department is a member of the Michigan Alliance for Lead Safe Housing. As a part of this coalition, we share information with legislators each year about lead poisoning in our area. The United States is the most wealthy and powerful country on earth, yet we die younger than people in less rich, less powerful countries, and we don't have equal opportunities for success and health. In the United States, we spend annually close to $7,000 per person on health care. This is much higher than other countries that spend a fraction of that amount, yet have a higher average lifespan. Health equity is not something that one person or one agency can accomplish. 
By working at all levels on the spectrum of prevention and addressing the root causes of health disparities, such as race and class discrimination, we are driving reductions in asthma hospitalizations, childhood lead poisoning, and many other health factors linked to housing quality. We define health equity as a fair, just distribution of the social resources and social opportunities needed to achieve well-being. Our focus on health equity stems from the problem of persistent and preventable gaps in illness and death between different groups in Ingham County. Only together can we become a place where everyone has a fair shot at a long and healthy life.